Man, wasn't that massive fig cutting a lot of fun? I mean, I just really enjoyed making that video for you guys. Thank you for checking it out. Now, I thought while we're on the subject of figs, I might as well kind of take you over here and show you what I've been up to lately because I've been doing all of my fig cuttings this year in a very different, easy manner that I've been used to doing in the past. And I am loving what I've been doing with them. It is so simple. Now, in the past videos, you guys have seen, actually, it's been several years now, you've seen me take those cuttings and you know create a little elaborate system with the fine fur bark, and I put them in a tote, and I've got them on the bottom heat, and we start late in the winter and go on through the spring. Well, lately, in, I've done videos showing you what I'm about to show you, but lately I've been doing all of my cuttings this way and we're going to look at the results now, but first let's go back here all the way, what today is September, I think 7th, we're going to go all the way back into May and we're going to check out some cuttings I got last May and show you how I stuck those and got them prepared and then we'll come back to now. So I just received some fig cuttings and I thought I would just take some time and show you guys how I'm going to propagate them. So these little cuttings are from a tree called Oro Gold. And I'm not quite sure why I bought them, except they had a really cool name. And I'm just interested in seeing how they grow and what they do in the end. But uh, let's get these guys in pots. There we are. Let's pile this guy in here. And then I went ahead already. These arrived. The guy who sent them to me, uh, he ended up putting some wax on the end, which I thought was kind of cool, just to seal the ends there and keep them from losing moisture. I went ahead and clipped the bottom of the cuttings off and then dipped them in some Hormidin 3 rooting hormone. And all we're going to do is just stick these guys right in the pots there, or right in the pot there. And we'll just fill it up with bark, keep those cuttings moist. Nothing special going on here. And that's it. Let's go ahead and water these guys. Get them completely saturated in there and I know what you guys are thinking. Mike, all you're doing is rinsing off the rooting hormone. Well, that's not exactly true because I dipped those things inside maybe 10 minutes ago. They've had a little bit of time to soak in. And on the bottom of those cuttings where they're actually going to root, that hormone is not going to be rinsed off. It's sitting flush against the bark. The hormones between the stick and the bark it's gonna be fine, guys. So there are little Oro cuttings. Isn't that cool? Just all sitting in a nice little pot. Why did I put them in one pot? Because if I put them in three different pots, then I'm using up three times the amount of rooting medium and three times the number of pots and three times the space in here. And we don't even know if they're gonna take it. So I like to do this. When they root, we'll pot them up into bigger pots and just let them go from there. But what is today? Today is May 16th, I believe. I'll come back and show you guys when something's happened. It's probably going to be about six weeks. Here we go. All right, so now before I show you how those Oro Gold cuttings turned out, let me show you some other cuttings that I got because I went a little nuts this year and was just buying up cuttings and figs like crazy earlier in the spring. But I got one more variety to show you getting prepared and stuck in their pots. Okay, guys, I am excited. I've got fig fever like it's nobody's business. I've got somewhere close to 45 varieties, which there are, I think, a couple thousand varieties out there, but uh, as many roadies as I've got, close to 50 varieties of figs is plenty for me, you would think. And then my fingers got a little busy on the keyboard, so I actually ordered some more fig cuttings. These came from Herman on eBay. He's a well-known, well-trusted fig cutting seller. Uh, has been growing figs for decades, and I bought figs from him in the past fig cuttings, and have grown them on. In fact, my Italian 258 came from Herman. The most beautiful tree I've got, probably one of the best performers, and I've even gotten fruit off of it in my zone 8B. And that was without a greenhouse. So here we go. These are the cuttings he sent. He never fails to impress me. They always show up in great condition and just ready to root. I am excited to get this started for you guys. And there they are. Look at all of these beautiful fig cuttings. Look at that. And he always sends more than he actually advertises so that you can ensure that you're going to get something to root. Now these cuttings have some beautiful dark wood and I absolutely love it. First thing I'm going to do here is just snip off a little excess material so that we've got some just some fresh material for these guys to root with. They've been shipped from across the country, sat in my refrigerator for a couple days and uh, we want to give them every fair chance that they can have here. 
man, he did send, what did he send? One, two, three, four, five, six cuttings. I think he only advertised like three or four of them. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Herman. We're going to skin these down just a little bit. Take a little material off each side. I do with my rhododendrons and just about all my hardwood cuttings. And it just helps give an extra little area of cambium for those roots to grow out of. Now this is the part you want to pay attention to and you can have a lot of fun with figs if you plant them upside down. They can be funny and grow down and then back up and do weird things. But if you look at the fig cutting, let's see if we can zoom on in on this enough. If you look at that and can see that there's there's a node right there. The the going the fig cutting is supposed to be pointing up, obviously, but you can see that there's a little tiny bud just above where that leaf broke off there. You want that little bud above the leaf, and that ensures that the cutting will be in the right direction. All right, so I got all these guys prepared. You can see this is pointing up. I've taken a small sliver of bark off of each of these little cuttings here and given them some fresh material on the bottom to start with. Then I rinse them in a little bit of water just to give something the hormone to stick to. I'll be using my Hormidin 3, my extra old container here that's just about out. Consequently, I will be dipping all of these right into the container. Oh no, a lot of people are going to freak out about that, but we're okay guys. This thing's just about the bottom of the barrel. In fact, I might just get rid of this container after this little use here. I wouldn't normally do that though. Normally you'd want to pour these or pour some into a smaller container and do it that way, but there you go. Do you need rooting hormone? Well, no, with figs, you really don't need rooting hormone, but these were a variety that I purchased that came all the way from the other part of the country. I don't have this growing at my place, and I want to take a little extra insurance to make sure that these guys make it. Once I get a good rooted fig, which I'm sure will get all or most of these to root, then I won't worry so much about it because I'll have my own tree that I can practice and experiment with all I want. But for now, thank you, Henry. We want to be on the safe side. And now these guys are just going to all go right in one pot. And then we'll just watch them root on through the summer. Now, I think I forgot to tell you guys what these are. Or did I? I can't remember. You tell me. Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you. These are Marseille Black VS. And I've read that they are really a good variety for my area, Zone 8B. And that they're cold hardy. They will fruit earlier, so I should get some nice trees out of these that will perform well in my region. Get a little water on these. We'll pack them down. Throw some more bark in there. And a little more water just to round it off. So that's it, we'll set them off to the side here and just wait for something to happen. Today's May 29th, I believe. I'll have the correct date down below and we'll come back when something's happened. All right, here we are. I've done nothing but water these things. We're all the way into September. Let's go check these things out. Man, it's been a great summer so far for all these roadies. These things are growing like crazy. We've got our latest batch. They're all coming up. I talk about them like they're a cake recipe here, but we've got all of our, uh, figs all our little varieties we gotta get a lot of this planted out next year or actually yeah probably next spring early spring i'll plant these guys out they're developing nicely and look at that bordeso negri ramada we're getting that fig coming in it's got to start turning a little bit here one of these days soon yep there are all the maples there but what you guys want to see is right over here this has been a little pile of fun this summer i've been doing all kinds of different things with these fig cuttings and you've seen videos in the past where i've done all those different types of cuttings or you know rooted them different ways well this is the simplest way and i've done a few videos about this look at that massive cutting it's been three weeks since i last filmed that piece that you saw in that video i posted and it is just growing up like crazy it's getting big it's getting it's just healthy it looks great it's going to be an awesome bonsai but let's show you here real quick what I started showing you earlier in this video, there's the Oro Gold. Let's pull that out of here. Actually, we're going to pull both of them out of here that we did in those videos and show you what they look like. There's the MVB or MBVS, if I can say it right. All right, so there's the two of them right there. Those are the two videos we just did. There's the Oro Gold. I pulled two of these out because they were rotted. I just came out looking at them and two of these cuttings were rotted. And then we've got, 
I pulled out, what was it? Um, two of the cuttings of the MBVS because they were rotted. So just full disclosure, one of these Oro Gold actually took and it did real well. Look at that healthy, beautiful growth. So one out of three ain't bad. And the advantage is now I have it here on my property. I can do anything I want with it. You can take cuttings all day long as it grows up. And then we've got our MBVS and it, we started with seven cuttings and it ended up five of them took and did real well. All I wanted was one of them. Now I've got five of these things. So they all are in one pot. So I'm going to have to separate them out. Let's see if we got anything going down below. Yep, we got roots down there. And we know we have roots on these because they've been growing on their own with healthy leaves for quite a while now. How about this one? We got roots. We got roots around the bottom of the container there. And so both of these are healthy and doing great. Now, I want to show you some other things real quick. So we got all these little fig cuttings going on here. There's the two that I just showed you back in there. But look at the rest of these. I did the same thing. I just stuck them in soil or a soilless medium. We've got two Violet Day Bordeaux and they're doing really good. They started growing and they've been green. They've had green growth for probably a month or so now. Doing really good, growing healthy. Over here, did the same thing with all of these. We've got one, two, three, what is it? Three, four, four, five Rockaway Green throughout there. We just stuck them and they just took off. I did nothing. I came out here and watered them every day or every other day along with this big massive cutting here. And they did real well. We got a green Ischia there. Um, through here, oh, we got a Vasilika Black. Let me get this roadie out of the way. We got a Vasilika Black right there and it's doing real well. And then these two just, you know, experiment, see how things go. Cold de Dom Blanc, and you don't see any green growth on them yet. I don't know how this one's turned out, but I've seen roots down at the bottom of these guys, just a couple small roots. And if I zoom in, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on this camera, but we've got a tiny bit of green growth right there at the crook of that little stem. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, tiny bit of green, so it's wanting to shoot off and start doing something. Time will tell with that guy. Got a whole bunch of YOLO bypass cuttings. I just went nuts this year, man. They all rooted, four of them, YOLO bypass. I'm excited to see how that one develops, just based on what I've read about them. And then over here, we've got some Italian 258. I couldn't help myself. I absolutely love that fig tree, and it grows so well. But look at this. Just started seeing some green growth growing up on that Italian 258. Look at that, beautiful. Absolutely love it. And then on this one, it's a very healthy, viable cutting. Looks real good still. And this is months, months of sitting in this pot. So I know something's happening in there. And when I tug a little bit, it's in there pretty firmly. I'm not gonna mess with it. Time will tell. Next spring, we'll see if this thing takes off or uh, heads for the uh, compost pile. But either way, it's working. It's working, all of these. We did the same thing. I did this video earlier in the summer and you guys saw this with the world's best mulberry and we got our Pakistani mulberry. We just stuck these cuttings in soil or a soilless medium and did nothing with them. And they've just taken off and just rooted really well on their own. That's how these hardwood cuttings are doing, man. And I'm just, I'm loving doing it this way. It's so stress-free. There's no real issues. You don't need anything special for them. And you're not worried about rot or anything like that. Yeah, I lost a couple cuttings, you know, back in there with the uh, Oro Gold and the MBVS. And I've lost a few cuttings here and there. But overall, I've gotten all of the cuttings to root, all of the different varieties. And some of them have gotten 100% to root. So that's what I've been doing for cuttings this summer. You know, it's no fuss. It just works really easy. It goes real smoothly and there's no problems at all. Now, I know I'm gonna get some questions about this and a lot of people are gonna say, well, Mike, you're doing this inside of a hoop house and you've got humid environment in there. And all I can say is, I've said this multiple times on the channel, it is not a humid environment in here. It, whatever's going on outside is the same as the inside. Both ends of this thing are open. There's a four foot by just over six foot door on both ends. They're always open, there's no door on it. And then through the summer, I just rolled this down a week ago because we're gonna be head into fall soon. But through the entire summer, I've had the side rolled up four foot. So the, the wind just blows through this thing. The air blows through it. In the wintertime, this freezes hard as a rock. And the temperature and the humidity and all that is 
just pretty much the same as the outside of this thing. It is not a greenhouse. It's not sealed. I don't have special fans or heaters or anything like that in here. The plastic just simply protects these plants from snow and ice and rain through the winter. So now that I've showed you how these cuttings are doing, I thought for those of you who want to stick around a little while longer and see what the figs are looking like out in the orchard, we go walk out there and I'll show you some of my favorites and how they're doing. All right, so here we are and you'll notice it doesn't look as cleaned up as it did before because I actually need to mow. Those weeds are growing up and they're growing up around the hay, but it's so dry and dusty right now. I'm just not messing with it, but you can see if you look out, if you've been following this little orchard series, you can see that there's more growth coming on these and some of them, especially at LSU Holly or way in the back there, if my finger's on it, that sucker is just taking off. We'll walk over there in a minute, but first I want to show you this side real quick. So these are the, the later ones that I planted. So they've had less time in the ground, not too much less, but they have had less, but I want to come check out this one right here this one is the one if you guys remember yeah i need to weed all this stuff get out of the way but this is the one that the coldadam ramada that i actually mowed over on accident and i left it a lot of you said just leave it see what happens mike and there it is and i was looking down here and i don't know if you can see it Let's see if the camera will pick it up it almost looks like let me get this weed out of the way it almost looks like I've got, we got to cover the shade, get this in the shade, here we go. A little bit of green growth, right, is it right there? No, that's a fertilizer pellet. Right there, I don't know if you can see that. Let me, there we go, i got to shade it. There's a little bit of green growth, right, right there. You see that? It looks green to me. It might still be alive. I've left it there, and we've just been watering it. We'll see what happens. Pray to God, hopefully that thing just takes off next spring. I'm not thinking it's going to do too much this summer, but got our Olympian over there. A lot of these things are just getting established, especially on this side. Not too much going on, but let's walk over here. I'm not going to go through this entire thing one at a time, but I'll just show you some of my favorites and what they're doing lately. That Man, that Ronde de Bordeaux is put on so much growth. All this stuff on the end here, that's all new growth. Just massive growth you can see the old wood from the original plant but it's just taken off man and this uh violet de bordeaux is finally getting set in it's got some little figs this year but over the next two three years as these things get established they're really going to start coming into their own but there's some nice new growth down below let's come on over here that black mission it's producing figs but uh it's not doing as good as i'd like to see it do i think it's just like the rest just still trying to get established but it's uh, doing something here. There's that Black Madeira KK just trying to get established. Finally starting to put on some nice growth down there. It's just getting later in the season. We're going to be head into fall. But uh, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is prune this one back. In fact, Wesley over in England, you're going to get some cuttings of this one. This is the plant that I actually got from KK. This is not a cutting of that plant. This is not a cutting from some other plant that somebody said was... A KK, this is the plant that was sent over to me from KK, and I know that's what you're looking for because you want to compare it to your other black Madeiras, but you're going to get some cuttings of that guy right there. But once I cut that back and we come back to next spring and it's been establishing all summer long this summer, I think we're going to see a lot of nice new growth just shoot out of there. We'll come back. Stay on the channel. Keep following. You'll see it next year. And then we got right here. We got one of, just turned out to be one of my all-time favorites. It's just such a beautiful stately tree, man, that Italian 258. Look at all those figs on there. Look at that. And I have a feeling that black Madeira behind me here, I have a feeling that's going to do the same as this because I actually, I took a cutting one year and the cutting was only about that tall on that black Madeira and it had about that many figs on it as a cutting. So I think once that thing gets established right there, it's going to do the same, but man this italian 258 is just looking beautiful and we're getting later in the season man now this time of year when i had them in pots all these things would be turning yellow and losing their leaves and looking ugly they're still hanging in there man and that's just the difference i'm seeing from growing them in the ground we've got that smith over here we got the le bourgeoisie right here now this one i'm definitely going to have to take all these cuttings i think i guess we'll see how it does over time in the ground 
I definitely need to pull up all this thistle too before that goes to seed, but um, we're just we're just getting this set in right now. Don't worry. There's lots of work to do. We'll get it's gonna get established and get going. I'll have it all weeded. Just keep with me, guys. So it ain't perfect quite yet, but uh, lots of beautiful growth. Man, getting poked by them things. Lots of beautiful growth down in there in that uh, Le Bourgeoisie. Lots of it. So. If you remember me talking about it in that last video, this variety right here, every year in the pot it died back to the ground. And so I'm going to have to either take all of this as cuttings or just cross my fingers and hope that it comes back because it's been in the ground. I might take a bunch of cuttings off of it this year though. We'll see. A Martinica Ramada, it's doing good. Getting some big leaves on it. Starting to put on some nice growth. Wish I had about three more months of summer, but I don't. That <laughs> strawberry verte. This thing, look at this. That sucker just fell over from the weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to definitely come back. And I'm probably going to snip it off right there and just boom. And then let all this growth come up. And those will all be cuttings all throughout there. And uh, it'll straighten up a little bit. Look at this one. This was a, believe it or not, guys, this was a small plant. Just this, uh, got all these weeds out of the way. There goes Henry. This is a small plant when I planted it. It was in a two-gallon pot, and it has put on a ton of growth. You want to know what that is? Violet de Solis. I'm excited about that one. Excited to see what's to come with it. I don't see any figs on it yet, but look at the size of that new stock all the way from the bottom. There it is. I'm telling you, this in-ground stuff, this ain't no joke. These guys really take off. Like I said, no figs on this one yet, but it just needs a few years to get established. Norde Barbenton, is that that one? Yeah, I believe so. I believe so, yeah. I need my little paper, but I'm pretty sure that's it. But look at that growth on it. Looking good. Got a couple little baby figs, they'll never ripen. That's that, uh, which one is this? Help me, guys, come on. Help me. That's that Vasilika Black. I had to get down in there and look at this hack. <laughs> so I get these two mixed up. That's that Col de Dom Grease Herman. And so I'm kind of I'm watching it. That's the Col de Dom Grease Herman. And that's the Col de Dom Grease Bod over there. So we're going to see. The leaves are looking pretty similar, but they're, they're so different in how, you know, their size. This one's a lot older. So we'll see what happens as they develop. But Vasilika Black, tons of new growth. Just a beautiful tree. You know what? Everything Herman sells, he's tried and tested over in his zone. I think he's like zone 6A or 6B. And he says, these are my top figs, you know. And uh, I'll tell you what. I got that one from him. I got that Col de Dom Grease from him. Everything I get from that guy. I got my Italian 258 from him. Everything I get from that guy just takes off and grows fantastic. I mean, I just can't say enough. He's just got some great material, man. Oh, that, I showed you guys that one. Uh, this is, geez, one of my favorites right here, LSU Hollier. I really need to weed out here. This thing is just taking off. It's probably my biggest, healthiest growing tree. It is in a little more shade. I'm gonna remove some brush and trees just to uh, get some more sun out here. But man, look at this one. Look at this branch. Just tons of growth, tons of growth. Look at that, that's all one season. On a plant that was already trying to push out growth on this other stuff. I mean, look at that, there's another one. Look at all them figs down in there. Figs, every branch, you get way down in there, I don't know if you can see them, figs. Look at all them figs, everywhere, fig, fig. I mean, look at this one branch right here. Figs all throughout there. I just haven't seen them ripen yet. Will they ripen? I don't know. Maybe not this year, I kinda plant them a little later. We'll see. Not worried about any of that. I'm just getting these things established and set in the ground. Brown turkey, he's finally picking up. We don't have to go through all of them. I know some of you probably want to. <laughs> I just get excited about this stuff. Look at that. That's that De Tres Blet right there. I almost got rid of that thing. Look at it. Took off. When I planted that below the hay line, you couldn't see any green. That's how small it was. It's already up several feet above the hay line now. Swati. Doing really, really good. This is that, uh, I always think cherry flavor. Cavalier. Got that one from Dan. Doing really fantastic in the ground. 
it was just a new little plant and i just said heck with it i'm gonna plant it out and look at that i'm glad i did look at them leaves man the size of my hand look at that huge beautiful growth coming out of that one we got that uh ben's golden riverside right here that was a cutting that i did for you guys on a video this past winter and it made it in fact when i planted it out if you remember one of them orchard videos when i planted it out it died i thought it was done but i left it anyway and this it came back from down below and that's what it's doing it's coming up and this is a hardy plant it's going to be fine now i'm sure it's well rooted down in there and this thing you saw it in the hoop house this one in the hoop house is one of my hardiest growers so next spring i'll bet this thing just takes off like crazy here's that cold the dom grease bod doing good putting on a lot of nice growth looking fantastic let's get my blocking it i'm blocking it look at that beautiful plant it's absolutely gorgeous love this stuff all right this video is starting to turn into something that only a fig lover could love but smith not growing as fast and big but it's just getting established don't worry guys it's coming it's coming i got nothing but patience look at this look at that figs all grown throughout there will they ripen i don't know it's just first year in the ground look at this look at that you like him that's a beautiful looking spider i better be careful where i start grabbing look at that thing holy cow here's that mission black mission what we got over here cold the dom blanc that's the cold the dom blanc same one i got the cuttings off of inside look at all the growth cold the dom noir i was hoping this one would put on more growth than it did but you know it's getting established i love still love the leaf pattern on this all these leaves are so royal and regal on this variety i don't know why i think that i just do for my figs i'm allowed to think it right i guess we're just making the rounds now we got celeste over here jh adriatic that's kind of like my strawberry verte just tipped over i'm gonna have to cut it down there and let it come up a little better from the bottom celeste loaded with figs i'm kind of hoping some of those ripen up before the season's over we got our tacoma violet over there loaded with figs haven't seen anything ripen yet uh what's this guy i got this one from kk i always have to think about the name i'll think about it i'll get it don't worry calderona there it is i had to turn this thing off and just think about it for a minute <laughs> calderona and i've actually like i told you before i got one of these figs to ripen indoors it was really cool it's a really beautiful fig and it's a flat fig look at that really cool really neat looking anyway that'll never ripen at least not this year who knows what will happen in years to come we somebody was talking to me about this online we do live in a unique climate uh in this area in the pacific northwest um in you know western washington it's kind of a, there's, it's a pseudo mediterranean climate and like i told you guys in the beginning of this whole orchard uh video series and now you're starting to witness it for yourself we're in september i mean you can see the leaves changing but it's hot it's clear this is how it goes in washington we stay clear and hot it's it's in the 80s um i think not too long ago it dipped up to the 90s at one point or you know hit the 90s at one point didn't dip up to them but uh it's you know it's hot and it's dry i mean look at this soil it's hot and dry <laughs> all the way into uh shoot it doesn't start raining usually till october mid-october so we might be in a great climate for these guys after they start getting really good and established in ground a couple years we'll see what happens i might uh prove myself to be a total liar here i don't know we're gonna find out stick with me uh colonel Littman's cross that's i had to sit there and think about that while i was talking to you let's move over here we got our maltese beauty i sit here and I, I water all these by hand and i say their name as i go by so i've gotten better at it i, I still have my list and i started with the list and i've still got labels down in there but I had to sit there and just say them. This is what I do with my roadies. They go, how do you know all the names of those roadies, Mike? I'm going to pull that out of there. I'm just worried I'm going to grab a spider. I said, how do you know all the names of all those roadies? Well, 
because I love them, one, and two, as I plant them and I water them, as I'm watering them, every time I go through and I water them, I say their name, I say their name, I say their name, I practice over and over and over. You know, if you love something, that's what you do, right? That is what you do. And this is Borgeso Grease. Just almost got rid of this one too, just like that Daytray S Blitz right down there. I almost got rid of this one because it wasn't doing anything. It seemed to be dying back in the pot and uh, I planted it out. I just threw caution to the wind. Let's plant it out. And I did it and look at it. The thing is taken off. That sucker is taken off. Laterula, not doing nothing. Supposed to be a good performer in my area. Got some figs on it. Once again, just getting established. It's okay, little buddy. You're just getting established. I'm sure you'll perform eventually. Super excited about this one. Which one is that? Come on, guys. I'm quizzing you. Ponte Tresa. Beautiful. Didn't know what to think of this one. Didn't know if I should put it out in the ground. <laughs> Look at it. When I planted it, it simply had that growth right there, up to there, maybe eight inches. It had this one tall thing coming up here. All this other stuff, this new green growth, all this is new. All this is new, getting in the ground. It took a while. Compared to the others, it took a while, but once it started taking off, it just started taking off. So, excited to see how that goes over time. And then everybody in the Pacific Northwest has to have this. It's a Desert King. Can't wait to see that just start pumping out the figs. Really looking forward to it, especially in my climate. And the Daytray Esplets, we talked about that. You wanna go look at it? It's got figs all over it. They say this thing produces three times a year. Of course, once again, this you know first year in the ground, it got a late start, so it's probably not gonna ripen anything. But give it a two, three, four years in ground, get some establishment going on it, you know? I think we might see something. We got our Stella. This one, geez. Steve, I can't thank you enough, man. It's kind of a funky looking tree. <laughs> I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about just hacking it all the way back to that little growth way down there in the bottom and letting it come back up again, just cause it's so long and lanky, but man, does it produce some good figs. I, I've actually got some ripe figs off of this in previous years. And uh, I knew I had to plant this one out. Beautiful tree, just beautiful, big, nice, healthy figs, man. Really excited to see these guys ripen, and I'm sure they will. They ripen before in the pot. Nine days old. And then what do we got here? Suwadi. That's the Suwadi. Beautiful little figs. I kept this one because of the fig color. They kind of start getting that red underneath, and then they kind of, the red spreads out around the bottom and I just and then it turns to like a yellow on top and I just looked at so many pictures of those and I thought that it was such a beautiful fig and just because it came from a different region than a lot of the other stuff I have here just had to keep it and it's taking off and doing good I thought this one was dying back now I actually lost this branch but then all this stuff started happening on the other side it's doing better than I thought it would Chicago Hardy doing nothing all right we'll give you time buddy we'll give you time so that's it that's all i got for you guys today thanks for hanging out with me it was a lot of fun i enjoyed going through all that i hope you guys did too if you did you know what to do hit the like button subscribe if you want to follow along and see how all these guys turn out have a fantastic week and i'll see you in the next video adios